Good morning, Bulldogs, and welcome back to another Beacon broadcast. With our winter sports coming to an end, let's take a look at our boys' basketball. And good luck at sectionals. Sadly, on Monday the 19th, on President's Day, we had school. Let's hear what Spike has to say about that. Studying is a crucial part of school. It can sometimes be the difference between passing a class or failing a class. Make sure to study with the proper materials for the class. Studying from the wrong textbooks or websites could result in a poor grade. If you're unsure if your source is accurate, Ask your teacher. They will point you in the right direction on which books or websites to read. An hour of studying could be the difference between failing or passing your class, tests, or projects. Good morning Bulldogs, it's Megan and today I'm at the elementary school touring the new edition. You may recognize this hallway because it used to be the book fair hallway and now it is bathrooms. So you might remember having book fair in here, throwing paper airplanes, eating ice cream, and now it is locker rooms and not just those bathrooms anymore. So that's stop number one. We're kind of into the new hallway now. You can see the higher ceilings, just a better design all around. Here is the auxiliary room, which is where they have the book fairs now, and they have like Christmas parties and stuff like that. Janitor's closet, um, that kind of looks like a lounge right there. But you can tell it's a lot more echoey in here. We got some bathrooms, but, oh, okay. So this, she mentioned, Miss Van Winkle mentioned to us, that's the Flex Lab right there. And they actually have a robotics team this year, which is very, very exciting for all of our Sciencey students, so yeah. All right, so moving down, we got some counselors' rooms, Mr. Alexander's room, which some of you might remember he was in the office at the annex. Here we have a big old display for Chinese New Year's, which, which is very fun and colorful. And then here they're going to start um, filling up this cabinet with trophies and stuff. So now we've gotten to the end, and as you see behind us, there is a big old bulldog on the wall. And then we're going to move on to the hallways. All right, we're going down one of the hallways now, and here's a special education room. And then for my XL students, this is Mrs. Re Mrs. Reagan and Mr. Reinhardt's classroom. And then as we move further down, you can see all of the uh, new lockers that they got, nice blue and bright. And if you hear some kids in the background, then that's because it's Valentine's Day and they're having a Valentine's party. So. Um, here is some new teachers. You can see some of the classrooms they're working on. And then we got some new, another new teacher and Mrs. Marshall. So that's the end of hallway one. Okay, now we're moving down hallway number two. And this is our life, the life skills class with Mrs. Hemmering in an auxiliary, auxiliary room. And then we got Miss Elstro. And then moving down, we got some more lockers and you can see the banners. And then we have Mrs. Foster's room, Mrs. Casson's room, 
and then moving all the way down we got mrs moore and mrs tedder which a lot of you might remember okay <laughs> all right guys so we're in the library now and they had a huge revamp a couple of years ago when they got a new teacher instead of mini economy they have bulldog bucks and they have a entire store that they can come and buy things and um you know toys candy drinks this makes it the library so much more fun it seems and with a new teacher they have new stations so it's not just pick a book out and read they have you know creation station construction zone tech time flex table it's so it's so much more fun here and i'm very jealous but yeah all right so now we're at our last stop which is the new and improved office they have a psychologist room and let's go look at the nurse's office shall we there's a conference room and then here's the front desk and then here is the nurse's office which looks like an entire doc doctor's office and we got some more stuff down here and then we have Lady the queen herself Howard. the yes. principal mrs van winkle and her new office so that is the conclusion of our tour today thank you so much for watching and have a great friday so what's the big deal about blood type why bother knowing your blood type i mean most days it's inconsequential it doesn't matter what your blood type is but there are some times when it matters a lot like when you need a blood transfusion we need to know your blood type because if you're given an incompatible match that could result in death so the blood types have to match for a transfusion um, it's also good to know blood type when you talk about crime scene or forensics and it can be helpful in paternity tests um, Oh, and for people that drink blood, blood type's important because the different blood types have different flavors. Uh, my favorite is uh, A positive, which I have right here. A positive blood <clears throat> The A antigen gives it kind of a nutty flavor to override that metallic flavor. And the B antibodies and the RH antigen kind of gives it a a sweet aftertaste and a surprisingly citrus note. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Oz, where did you get that blood? Um, from a student. Well, <laughs> a student that's getting extra credit. It's still warm. You want to taste? Oh, uh, no, thank you. Okay. I'm back again with book club with Miss Stiglman because there's a new book club uh, for this fine weeks. What is the book for this book club? Uh, this time we're reading A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Uh, just a quick synopsis. It's about a girl where a murder-suicide um, took place in her town about five years ago and she thinks that what the police found is incorrect so she's trying to kind of solve the case on her own. It's really good. So it sounds like a mystery thriller type novel? Yep. And how many uh, book club meetings are there per book? Um, we've already had uh, two. We have one more to go. I have 17 kids in the book club. Um, so it's kind of too late to join right now, but if you want to, uh, next nine weeks, we're going to read If I Stay, which is one of my favorite books ever. That sounds great. And like always, Bulldogs, if you're in the book club, stay up ahead with your book and enjoy the book. Seniors, are you struggling to get through senior year? Are you noticing that you're losing motivation because you're almost done? Are you skipping classes because you think it's not worth it to go? If this sounds like you, then you might have senioritis. Senioritis is an affliction where seniors tend to lose motivation because they just want to be done. 
Symptoms may include, but are not limited to, declining grades, a lack of studying, repeated absences, excessive procrastination, and dismissive attitudes about school. The only known cure is a phenomenon known as graduation. However, there are multiple treatments that seniors can take to prevent the progression of the condition. Organization has shown to be a very effective treatment for the condition. The use of planners and other organizational tools help students to keep track of deadlines and other important dates. Checking grades is also an important factor in treatment of the condition. If your grades fall too low, you may be disqualified from scholarships and lose other privileges. In tandem with the previous treatment, attendance is also an important step in treating senioritis because it is easier to keep your grades up when you aren't missing class. In relation to the past two tips, keeping up with your classwork and homework is an important step in beating senioritis. By going to school, it is easier to keep up with your work, which makes it easier to keep your grades up. Getting enough sleep is not only healthy for you in general, but it is also a great way to prevent senioritis. The American Academy of Sleep Medicine recommends that children aged 13 to 18 get 8 to 10 hours of sleep per night. Getting adequate sleep helps to increase attention span and motivation, boosts mood, memory, and learning, helps to strengthen the immune system, helps to reduce stress levels, and much more. Prioritization is key in defeating senioritis. Staying focused on school and the most important things like due dates, college deadlines, scholarship deadlines, and graduation can help to give you an extra push of motivation. And finally, motivation is arguably the biggest killer of senioritis. Staying focused on your goals and what you need to do to achieve those goals is the most powerful defense against the progression of this condition. By taking these tips into consideration, you will almost certainly defeat the menace of senioritis. We're here with Shay. And how much do you think this makeup product costs? I'm thinking like $30. 25 okay. And then how much do you think this is? It's called a Dyson Airwrap. It's a hair product. Like $500. Six hundred dollars. How much do you think this lip oil costs? Let's go. Thinking like fifty. Forty. You're doing better than I thought. This beauty blender. Like fifteen. Twenty. How much do you think this eyelash curler costs? Like two hundred. Fifteen dollars. Oh. Oh shoot. Who are we here with? Carter Stanford. How much do you think this lip balm costs? Probably like. Three bucks. Twenty-five dollars. How much do you think this hair product costs? It's called a Dyson Air Wrap. Fifteen. Six hundred dollars. Oh. How much do you think this lip oil costs? I'm gonna go with thirty. Forty. How much do you think this beauty blender is? Twenty. Twenty dollars. Good job. And then, how much do you think this eyelash curler is? Probably, probably 65 $15. That is way overpriced. Some of those items are way overpriced. I agree. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. And let's check in with our color guard team. Hey, Bulldogs. The Blue Wave sure did have a fantastic weekend. They started off with a successful performance at the JV Halftime Show on Friday. On Saturday, they traveled all the way to Zionsville, where they scored 74 points, placing them first in the state. Good luck to them as they travel to Northview this weekend to compete one last time before prelims. Do you find yourself procrastinating and not wanting to do your work? Is it because of your phone? What are the Bulldogs' screen times? Let's ask Harmony. Good morning, Bulldogs. It's Harmony Owens here, and today we're going to be talking about screen time. I'm going to check in with some of the students to see what their screen time is. Our first victim is senior, Allie Bales. Allie, what's your screen time? Seven hours. Next, I have sophomore Abby Sangster. Abby, what's your screen time? 12 hours. Mr. Talbot, what's your screen time? 3 hours and 44 minutes. Next, I'm here with senior Nate Mitten. Nate, what's your screen time? 8 hours and 13 minutes. Lastly, we're here with sophomore Josie Daniels. Josie, what's your screen time? Uh, my screen time is 4 hours. This just in. 
The class of 2026 will be putting on a staff versus students volleyball tournament to help raise money for their junior prom. Teams will be seven players and two coaches, $5 per each participant. The tournament will be on March 7th. Sign your team up on online through the form that has been emailed to you. Form filled out for each team, please. Today is your last day. The money and teams and dishes need to be submitted. The money needs to be collected and turned in by the team captain. Thanks, go volleyball. <laughs> so I'm here with Olivia Hicks and she has some information for us about the volleyball fundraiser, Students vs. Staff. So can you provide us some information on that? Yeah, so we are gonna have the Staff vs. Students Volleyball Tournament. It's gonna be on March 7th at 6.30. We're gonna do teams of six players and one alternate. And then you can have one coach as well, $5 per participant. And so all your money and everything for the team will be due today. Okay, um, is there anything else you think um, students here should know about this game? Um, well, I've heard in the past that staff has won every time. So I think we need to make the students win this round. Thank you all for tuning in for this week's Beacon broadcast. I hope you all had a fabulous February. And remember, Go Big Blue!